Apart from physical, capital, natural resources and technology, the growth of every nation depends on the collaboration between the government and the people. When there is a disconnect between the two, development or positive change can't be achieved, as highly developed countries have governments that focus on these areas, with human resources playing a key role in evolution. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, in a nationwide broadcast on Monday, in the celebration of the new year 2024, outlined in his speech the objectives of his administration for 2024, as well as his broadened plans for Nigerians in the new year. Tinubu listed his administration's eight priority areas to include national defense and internal security, job creation, macroeconomic stability, investment environment optimization, human capital development, poverty reduction, social security, amongst others. It's been seven months since Tinubu took over from his predecessor, President Mohamed Buhari, but Nigerians are still hoping to see an actualization of Tinubu's renewed hope agenda. Joining us on The Morning Show to discuss this and other pressing issues in Nigeria as we build on this year, 2024, is Chief Olusha Shoba, former governor of Ogun State. Good morning, sir, and welcome to The Morning Show. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Nice to be with you. Well, Chief, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I mean, as uh, a political leader and also as uh, a citizen, let's begin by asking you what your expectations are for the year 2024 in terms of how you expect Nigeria to turn out. Uh, I have a reasonable confidence that uh, the year 2023 uh, is going to be like perhaps the worst of the years that we have ever had. Uh, starting from that, I strongly believe that year 2024 uh, will be the beginning of uh, the year of uh, the president's uh, renewed hope, particularly when uh, he now has the budget passed and he can now start implementing his vision from the uh, fiscal arrangement that he has uh, put in place, which the National Assembly uh, strictly uh, approved for him. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Now, um, according to the PDP, They've described um, the hardship occasioned by the president as reckless, ill-advised, insensitive, and programs from this administration not well thought out. What's your take on this? You don't expect uh, the PDP uh, to see anything positive about this uh, government. Uh, they went all out up to the point of uh, becoming uh, what I would call uh, exhibiting indigenous ambition to be president. Uh, of course, they lost at every level. They, they are still uh, nursing the great wound. And therefore, uh, they use all kinds of languages to describe the situation in the country. I do agree. Uh, that things are very tough for everybody, irrespective of uh, one status in society. There is nobody in this country who is not feeling the pain and the current hardship. That I will admit, that I will not pretend not to know, but I can tell you that uh, uh, the government at the same time is struggling very hard to contain the hardship and reduce the pain. Okay. Let's speak about the hardship. It's not just the hardship. The people are dying. Something happened in Plateau. Till date, the president has not visited. And Happy New Year to you, sir. Good to see you again, sir. Uh, the president has not visited. I, think I'll, I always tell you, today we are going to have some boxing. Box. 
<laughs> Punches. <laughs> Aremo, I'm ready for you. <laughs> Aremo, God bless you, sir. Yes. So, as God I was bless saying, you. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you, sir. So, as I was saying, people are dying. There's a lot of pain. The removal of subsidy increased the pain. No money in the pockets of people. And like Dr. Abati has been quoting, an economist saying that 2024 will be one of the worst years economically for Nigeria. The National Assembly accepted one extra 1.2 trillion in the budget, which a lot of Nigerians are complaining about. What would you like to say to President Tinubu, your very good friend, to do as regards all of this? Of course, the National Assembly, uh, they have exercised their, their, their duty, including the increase in the budget. But increasing the budget is one thing. Implementing the budget is another thing. And the, the, the president will set his own priority. It does not follow that the president will take all the increases and uh, just go a wire. They've done their own. It is now left for the president to now prioritize his own agenda within what the uh, National Assembly did. But I, 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 as to, to the pain, I, mean, I, I have direct access to him. Uh, in the last um, 10 days, I've had two audiences with him, and we have had very deep and serious discussion. And part of my own role as an elder statesman who is not looking for anything from government, I'm not asking for oil block, I'm not asking to be ambassador to any nation. Uh, I, I am contented at 84. How much can I eat and how much are my needs? So we, 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 we are there to, to give him counter information to advise him, and we do that. And uh, I can assure you, uh, he's a listening person. I had a quality time with him on Christmas Day. Uh, even my, my grandson uh, engaged him in discussion, and uh, the young, the young boy was very honest with him and told him some of the feelings that is going on. So um, I can assure you, uh, you talk about Plato, it's most unfortunate. I must tell you that uh, there's no Nigeria who will not uh, cry for what happened in Plato. The unnecessary clean, and uh, we need to have a really uh, well-organized, broad-based policy to contain this uh, intercommunal uh, conflict that is bedeviling us all over the country. Uh, I assure you, it's very much on top of it. The issue of token appearance, it is not just token. It must be ready when it's going to go there to be able to tell them some of the major steps and action that he is going to take to contain this situation that has been uh, going on, particularly in the Middle Belt. Uh, for, for many years in Benway, there, there were a series of killings in the past many years. And uh, this intercommunal, over so many issues, religion, land, uh, is uh, one of the major problems that uh, President Bola Tinubu inherited. Well, sir, um, you, you, in response to Ayo's question earlier on, you said the opposition, <coughs> PDP, Labour Party, uh, what do you expect them to say? Is it that you think that the opposition party uh, is made up of uh, just noisemakers who should be disregarded? Well, we have seen very clearly that the opposition parties are likely to play a more frontline role uh, in the course of the uh, year and, uh, you know, uh, in the immediate future, in preparation for the next round of general elections. We've seen Peter Obi of the Labour Party issuing statements on virtually every issue expressing his opinions, visiting uh, uh, spots where there are issues across the country and making his own contribution. The same with uh, uh, Atiku uh, Abubakar uh, of the People's Democratic Party. Is it the mindset of APC leaders that these opposition leaders are just uh, noisemakers uh, who should be ignored? What would they say anyway? Or the APC mindset uh, is along the line of robust engagement with 
the opposition and listening to the opposition. What is the reality? Well, I agree. I expect what they are doing. That's, that is their role. You use the word robust. You, you robust and I agree with you. There must be robust engagement if they don't engage us robustly. How will we know uh, some of our shortcomings, our own uh, uh, challenges? Uh, I, I mean, even when Obi went to plan to making token uh, appearance, it's part of uh, uh, robust engagement. We, we did it before when we were in ACN. We, we robustly engaged uh, President Jonathan heavily. So uh, what they are doing is they are playing the role that expected of the opposition. Uh, I, I just use that word to say, well, what do you expect from them? Because look, we are in government and uh, the throw punches, we, we, will defend, we will defend the punches and where necessary, we will, we will give a little rushing of their own face too. But I agree that uh, they are within the bounds of opposition uh, in a way that they have been critical. And we will analyze the uh, statements, their reactions, and see whatever we find will be useful. But they also, uh, are very close to a power, but I will will not just uh, lambast the government of the day, it will offer alternatives. So I expect the PDP and the Labour Party to continue to engage us, as you said, robustly, but they themselves, if, want to, if they want to be honest with themselves, should now give alternative to the policies that we may be executing. All right, uh, a fair point there in terms of giving alternatives to the policies that the ruling party is um, executing. But I'd like to take you back to your statement about the fact that even your grandson, as young as he is, is aware of the acute hardship faced by the Nigerian people. And you said that he posed the question to the president and the president responded with some of the things he planned to do. We heard when, you know, we heard the people in the background, the market men and women, when the president's convoy was going to the Jumat prayer just before the new year, saying, Ibn Bawa, which translates to, we are hungry. And we heard chants around that. Usually when the president in his or is in his own domain, you would hear chants of, you know, praises and welcome. But the people couldn't hold back their, you know, their hunger, their thoughts, and just the simple fact people are hungry. They want to get out of this situation they are in. As an elder statesman, what would you advise the president going forward? What are some key things he must put in place to at least alleviate the sufferings of the people, despite some of the necessary policies is had to make in order to move the nation forward? I wouldn't advise the president via a rise, of course, because I have access, as I told you. I had a, a just on Christmas Day, even though it was Christmas Day, I had quality uh, engagement and discussions uh, uh, with him. Yes, uh, there is hardship, there are problems, uh, we expected it because uh, as, of, as of the time that President Bola Tinubu uh, assumed office, there was not a single allocation for oil subsidy. The previous administration did not allocate a, a, a cobble for 1st of June, for 30th of May, for oil, for oil subsidy. What else do we expect from uh, President Tinubu? when it cannot go outside the uh, act. The law is there, not one couple of allocations. He had no choice but than to pronounce the removal of subsidy because he would have, he would, he would have breached the law immediately he was sworn in if he continued with the subsidy because no allocation in the, the, budget, in the budget for first subsidy. And naturally, the multiplier effect of oil subsidy started immediately. Um, it is a common sense. I don't have to be an economist. The cost of transportation shot up by almost 500 to 1,000 percent. 
And that naturally will affect even food products, will affect every aspect of our life, will affect movement, will affect workers going to work. Somebody who spend maybe uh, 50 naira to and fro from work will now be spending 1,000 naira. That affects uh, the pocket of the uh, individual. This I know very well. Uh, and, and I'm aware that the removal of subsidy uh, has affected every aspect of our lives. And uh, there's no segmentation. Both the rich and the poor are feeling it. Even in the private sector, I keep talking to the big players in the industry. They are, they, they are feeling the pain of the exchange rate. These are uh, policies that President Trump had no choice. But what, one thing you can say about him is that he exhibited uh, uh, great courage. Great courage, I would say, to have taken such very painful, very hard decisions. And the reaction that you are talking about, even when he was going to for Jumata, naturally, we don't expect people to hail the government in every aspect. We, 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 you, you hear, and then you go back home and rearrange things and be conscious of uh, the situation on the ground. So I, I agree with you. But what, has, what would have been the alternative? We were virtually subsidizing the economy of all our neighboring countries. Smuggling was thriving heavily. The past administration was borrowing heavily to pay salaries. They didn't have even uh, room for uh, uh, one cobble, for capital uh, development. Must we continue in that way? Okay. That we are, we, we are borrowing money okay, sir. To, to, to run recurrent uh, expenditure. Okay, sir. But a lot of people argue with you that this idea to tell Tinubu as a hero, President Tinubu as a hero, for removing subsidy, it's not working because we are still paying subsidies. Even some have argued, probably yeah, at a lesser amount, but there's still subsidy on petrol. When you look at it, and that smuggling you're still talking about still goes on. Our neighboring countries are still tapping from our oil because we still have the cheapest, one of the cheapest oil compared to some other countries. Secondly, you talked about borrowing, sir. We are still borrowing heavily. Between the six months threshold or seven months that he's been there, he said he spent 7.9 trillion. I mean, 7.3 trillion that he's now going to, you know, the National Assembly to help him securitize for ways and means. That's money printed. So we are still borrowing heavily. And in fact, he just put another loan request of seven, over 7 billion, another 100 million euros. So all the things we so called claim that he has done, they have not worked. That's the argument a lot of people put, that he didn't think through before removing subsidy. And my last question would be, if you are to rate President Tinubu's administration in seven months, what would score would you give it over 10? I, I, I won't come out into the public and start rating. You, see, you, you, you rate based on the facts and figures. What you have raised, for example, the issue of uh, borrow, still borrowing. When the treasury is empty, when the previous administration was borrowing to pay salary, and you, you, you got in, the whole place is empty, what else can you do other than, in the meantime, starting like for, for now, you have to borrow to fill the gap. That does not mean that the culture of borrowing will go on forever and ever. It's only seven months in, the, in office now. So that's, that's my first reaction. You've met an empty treasury. You, there, there, was, there, there was nowhere to turn to other than to still engage in a little bit, a little bit of borrowing. But after the first year in office, the whole thing will be reviewed and we'll see our way through. So talking of still borrowing, when, you, when your pocket is empty, you have to go to your bank to show you up for, for some time. It depends on how you now manage uh, that uh, uh, situation. And the way you said there was no subsidy, how come if there was no subsidy, as many people claim, how come that at the time that uh, petroleum was selling, at the rate it was selling, in 
other neighboring countries, the prices were different. How come that if the subsidy has no effect, why were people demonstrating in Cameroons if they are not feeling the pinch, pinch of cheap oil coming from Nigeria? How come that people in Niger, where there's like, like uh, Southwest, the border between us and uh, the Republic of Benin, is just walking across. If you get to Ilara, or you get to Ketu, or you get to um, 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 many of the border with Ogu State, you walk across in the market in Ilara is half of Benin. So how come the people in our neighboring country were demonstrating and shouting if there was no subsidy, if they are not feeling the effect of uh, subsidy, which we were subsidizing them. Even if you say there is no subsidy, at least we were subsidizing our neighbors. But we are still paying the subsidy today. That's the challenge. If you look at it, international crude oil price, once they increased, Nigeria's own petrol price have been remain, has remained constant. So the question is, we say we remove subsidy, but we are still paying the subsidy today. And you are comparing this administration with Buhari administration, which we know was another wasteful one. But the truth is, in about six, seven months, we have gotten about 7.3 trillion in ways and means. Buhari's eight years, what we were talking about was about 22, 23 trillion in ways and means. In seven months of Tinubu's administration, over 7 trillion compared to 22 trillion in eight years. That's abysmal. So people are saying that the borrowing in this administration is unbelievable. I have explained to you that every, we are lucky. By by 1st of June, the whole system uh, had been set up to totally collapse. That's what I'm telling you. If we didn't go the way uh, the government had to go. Uh, okay, take for example, let me give you uh, one thing I discussed with him on Christmas Day. I can reveal that. In the issue of foreign exchange, do you know that we Nigerians are also not happy? The amount of money out of the system, me as, as a grassroots person, as a journalist, in, and you know my area is investigative journalism, even ordinary drivers, ordinary uh, organizers, they are changing their little naira to 59, 50, they keep the $20 at home, $50 at home. You see, the confidence that everybody lost before uh, Tidumbu came in spilled over into his administration. I have had to tell him, I said, look, Mr. President, can you do something? The amount of money out of the system is enormous. What can you do to encourage people? Even if you, I even told him, go as far as saying, well, look, ICPC, EFCC, stop querying source of funds. Let them bring all this money that they are high. Even the scarcity of Naira. I told him, I said, some people are keeping, even the new Naira note that was supposed to be in circulation, some people are keeping it, and they are selling it at uh, event center, party centers. We in Nigeria ourselves need to change our culture. I, I, I can tell you, he, he is in pain. And when we talk to him, I can see the pain in, 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 in him. So you see, uh, as I said, it's only seven months. Let's try a little bit more. Maybe by the time it's a year or so, like Wallace Schenker said, we will do a, a, a massive review of, of the whole thing. Well, Chief, let's talk about the subnationals. You, you've been governor twice. In the report this submitted... This what? In, sir? In the report submitted by the... You said, let's talk about what? The states, state governments. Because we've been focusing on Tinubu and the federal government. Yeah. Now, the National Bureau of Statistics, in yeah. its uh, uh, Q3 uh, third quarter report on capital importation, the flow of foreign direct investment into Nigeria, reported that 27 states of the Federation recorded zero FDI. In uh, 2022, it was 28 states. This year, MBS tells us, okay, Abia has been able to move out of that uh, 
bracket because it has attracted uh, investment. Why is it that our state governments are not centers of productivity? They just go to Abuja every month to go and collect uh, their share of uh, a federation account. Uh, as a former governor, what do you think we can do to make these uh, state governments, uh, states, you know, uh, these states uh, productive? Considering the fact that Nigeria is blessed with resources everywhere. Is it this uh, attraction of uh, federal allocation that is making many of our states unproductive? I agree with you. Uh, as a former governor, uh, uh, I'm amazed about the size of government in the states. Uh, I'm amazed at the cost of governance in the state. I am amazed about the so-called uh, importation of uh, technocrats into the system. When I was governor in Nogu State, I did not go into government with a single messenger. I did not have a chief of staff. I used all the permanent secretaries as equivalent of chief of staff, permanent secretary, government house, permanent secretary, uh, governor's office, permanent secretary, political. In fact, my rural identification, which is massive in every part of, was handled by uh, Wale Bajomo, a permanent secretary. So uh, I'm amazed and I'm disappointed at the size. In my time, if I'm going to Abuja, uh, Mrs. Shodimu, the then catering officer, will go ahead of me, buy whatever needed to be bought to prepare my meals when I, while I'm in Abuja, and we all return to uh, to, the, to Abekuta. I didn't have a full-fledged workforce in Abuja, and I wasn't ever going to Abuja unless there was need to go to Abuja. Now, many governors spend more time in Abuja. I can tell you all these things are, are not something that you can de defend at all. And I agree with you. Um, I was talking to the uh, local government executive of Abekuta South a few weeks ago when they came to see me. And I told them that they should be up and doing. I gave an example. I said, people perpetuate their name uh, and they want to have their name in perpetuity by writing to local government requesting for a street to be named after them. And you are, you are acceding to it with only 200,000. I said, anybody who was in a street name after him, you should ask him, what has he done in, in, that, in that street? Has he tied the road? Has he uh, erected a solar panel around it? And that anybody who was in a street name after him, try to put a premium of five million. And from there you make more, they couldn't understand. When I was telling them many ways that even the local government can make money, and the state government, I can tell you, the state government, even in local states, we are, we are, they are not collecting uh, telemen rate, land use, land use decree. We elite. I mean, I'm living in a mansion. It's because I was former governor, I pay my rate up to, I have to ask them. They don't even send me notices, but I mean, Governor Dapabiadu is now trying to now computerize the system where you have all the land, all, and then this is the way to make money. In London, I have a house. I pay council tax. Demand is always, the, the demand from me. There are many ways state government, all those of can make money, all those of us building mansions in, in, in Southeast, mansions in many parts of the, of the country, we should be made to, to pay telemen rate, ground rate, and everything. So I can tell you the, the state government need to be up and doing uh, in a way that even we, the elites, who are such changing government, are dealt with. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I was just um, having a look at um, a review of your meeting with the president as the class of the governors of the class of 99 in July last year, following the inauguration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And some of the things um, former Governor Lockheed Benedion said after the meeting was that 
your discussed unemployment, your discussed um, palliatives, your discussed electricity, and some of the things that um, the former governors, 1999 said, were looking forward to seeing in, during this administration. I'd like to talk about unemployment because that's another key area for this particular administration. We don't have the unemployment figures. Well, the figures released was use, using an adjusted adjusted rate and just looking at underemployment instead of unemployment in the, you know, in its whole. We've seen in the last year a rapid rate of what we call the Jackpot syndrome. And this is that many Nigerians, young ones, talented Nigerians, have gone abroad, got migrated for better prospects at, in our life. We need to contain that situation. Well, we also need to create jobs in this country. How would you rate this, um, the situation of things in terms of unemployment and what should we do going forward to ensure that not only are we able to create employment for the team in Nigerian population, especially the young people, but also to create an enabling business environment for businesses to thrive in Nigeria. Yes, I, I see that as a major uh, challenge because I am aware um, many graduates after going through a course of studies are frustrated. A graduate has no job, roaming around the street, having to do menial job, uh, having to be working in hotels. It's not the kind of thing that uh, I wish to see. When I was young, in those, in those days, as soon as people come out of the University of Ibadan, uh, a car uh, and a portfolio is waiting for them. Uh, in my day, when I came out of Methodist Boys High School, with only school start, many jobs are waiting for me. Uh, the situation is not like that at the moment. That is a serious challenge. But you see, unfortunately, uh, it's coming at a time when uh, the uh, exchange regime, intervention of everything has affected, even the, the private sector. The industrialists uh, sourcing for foreign exchange for imported products for their factories uh, are, are, not, are not increasing workforce. So um, let's wait for the major intervention, like I said, and hopefully, uh, he told me he was going to sign a document, or he told me on, on Christmas Day he was going to sign a document to allow, to encourage people not to go continue to bury uh, uh, money in their houses, in their vault, in under their bed. Is I do I think it's going to sign an executive order to encourage people to come out with uh, fund. Uh, so all these things will take time. Uh, even private sector are not at the moment even increasing their workforce. And I, I I'm sorry to say, it hurts me when I see people that. Uh, migrate out of the country, country to what you call jackpot to other country. I pity them because I know uh, most of them are regretting going to this other country because in those countries you hardly have a room for one common saving because in, 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 in all these so-called countries tax rate value added tax on every product, uh, everything is taxed. And in America, they allow you to spend all your money in advance, credit card, credit card. By, by the end of the month, you, you, you spend all your salary to clear the uh, backlog, and then you start all over again. Okay. It, it, okay. It's when they get there, they, they realize that uh, they've gone into uh, uh, an impossible situation and they can't come back. So I will appeal to the young ones, uh, at least our system in Africa uh, helps. There is a, a, a local insurance of a kind. I know okay. how many of my old age people I take care of. So uh, it would, as I said, it will also take time before we can okay. uh, re-engineer increase in employment. Okay. Okay, Aramosa. Uh, uh, so, let me just quickly say this. You said that President Tinubu was a hero for removing subsidy. He took the bold decision. Would you also call Good Luck Jonathan a hero for removing subsidy many years ago, but your party kicked against him 
and all of you had a protest against him. And also, the second question will be about Unamdi Kano. What should be done as regards this Unamdi Kano situation and the Igbo question? And probably someday, the conversation about the Igbo presidency. Don't the Igbo still have a right at presidency since they return to democracy? Well, I'll start with your last question. <clears throat> of course, the Igbos have a right like any Nigeria, and I support their right to, uh, to the presidency. The, the, there should not be a situation where uh, we are treating any part of the country as a secondary citizen. But you see, uh, some of my brother Igbos uh, think that uh, uh, it's a right, entitlement. Our brother Igbos must talk to ourselves only um, in the gay. Talk to me that you would like to be president. That came to me to talk to me that you'll be president. When Abella and I wanted to, we went around the whole of the East. We saw in Amda Zikiwe, we saw uh, uh, Onu, we saw Mbakwe. We went around to each of their homes in their villages. Most of the Igbos didn't think that they should talk to us in Southwest. I feel sorry about that. I mean, look, the 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 the, the shake across the south south, led by people like uh, the Bussi, uh, uh, Commodore Ebitiki, we and Co. With us, Yoruba, that built built up to June 12, was, was forgotten. Two, uh, you see, the tribalistic politics cannot help anybody who wants to to be president of this country, must recognize the other tribes. The, uh, the kind of entitlement cannot give the Igbos the presidency. As for Nam uh, I have not discussed it with the president, but I know that uh, from what I have from other sources, he's asking the Attorney General, can he, as a president, interfere with court processes? Can he order the court to stop the processes. These are issues. If we are negotiating something for Kalu, uh, uh, we have to look at the implication in terms of uh, the legal processes right. and what are the power of the president to either interfere with the court or not. All um, right. Going back to now, the first question. Uh, Very quickly, your, your, sir, because of our time. Yeah. The first question I asked you, you called President Tudubu a hero question. for removing subsidy. Would you call Good Luck Jonathan a hero for removing subsidy? And why is it that when President Jonathan removed subsidy, your party then kicked against him? So he too is a hero, isn't it? Or is not a hero for removing subsidy then? At that time, the subsidy was minimal. And what we are saying then was that uh, uh, they should have tackled the corruption. Now, the corruption now continued and, continued and became bigger and bigger and round tripping, round tripping. People bring it, I mean, before Jonathan, after Jonathan, a lot of events happened. Round tripping, bringing in vessels and you know, round tripping it vessels right, four or five times. So the, the, the corruption in the subsidy became higher before that was, that was the situation between, I mean, of, of course, I respect Jonathan. He's a gentleman president. All right, I respect sir. him. All right, sir. Thank you very much uh, for expressing your thoughts towards former president. Good luck, Jonathan. And of course, your take on other issues in the economy under uh, this administration of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. We had the Aramo Olushegun Oshoba, uh, state, elder statesman and former governor of Ogun State.